Welcome to the Mount Union Church. This is Pastor Corey J. Pruitt. We're welcoming you to share with us at 1501 West 3rd Street or search out our website at www.mountenianbaptistlive.org. Join us for our services live on Facebook. 8.30 a.m. is our Sunday school. 9.30 a.m. is our corporate time of prayer and intercession. 10 o'clock a.m. is our worship service. Wednesdays, 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. are Bible studies. Don't forget our exciting Saturday Bible study at 11 a.m. Join us as Mount Enon in 2019. We're turning back to God. We're turning back our focus, our fellowship, and our fruitfulness. They're all tied to God. We look forward to having you and your family join us here. We invite you to join us every day on the prayer line at 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. Just dial 937-265-4344, extension 101. Then enter code 502-801-253, pound. some elements to you so that you'll have an understanding of what's going on in this text. Jesus has been confronted by by a family who's having some financial difficulties. In fact, these these difficulties bring about some questions and you know how it is when loved ones die how the portions are to be come on uh, shared and to be dispersed come on you know what I mean 
And Jesus is now expressing a parable because this Pharisee, this man, comes in the wrong spirit, trying to get him to do something. Come on. Uh, that is not uh, necessarily correct. And he goes on at verse 16 and says, He spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man bought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits and he said this is what I'm going to do I'm going to pull down my barns and build greater barns and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods and I will say to my soul so thou hast much goods laid up for many years take thine rest or ease eat drink and be merry but God said but God said, God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens. Consider the birds. They sow nor reap, neither they neither sow nor reap which neither have storehouse nor born. And God, if I was in the right church, somebody would have shouted. And God feeds them. How much more are you better than the fowls? I want to talk just for a few moments, if you allow me, losing sight of God. Losing sight of God. I think this is important today because many of us think of ourselves to be holy. Many people came to church, if you will, with this mindset and mentality. They've done everything but died. But they've come in, they're holy this morning. They look at themselves as an upright Christian, a saint of God. And they've come in saying that they are right with God. But I'm here to tell you that it's easy for us to lose sight of God. A lot of times we become selfish in our doing and we become uh, self-oriented, if you will, and we have a, sen a tendency of losing sight of what it is that God wants for our lives. And I want to tell you tonight, or today rather, that you'd understand that sometimes God takes you through stormy situations. Sometimes God takes you through painful places. And because we are selfish individuals, we very often make an effort to avoid those places. We have a tendency of uh, finding ourselves in this place, if you please, uh, where we think of ourselves more highly than we are, the, and we think that everything ought to be good all the time, but sometimes God takes you through those rough places in your life, young people, to teach you what it means uh, to understand and to comprehend that every day is not going to be good. He sometimes take you, takes you through moments in life that are not so pleasurable so you understand that, 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 that just because you're having a bad day does, does not mean that you're supposed to go and blow your brains out. 
I know some of you don't understand, but suicide, the spirit of suicide is running rampant in the midst of our young people, and many of them are in the thought pattern. They think uh, that because Rodney has quit you, uh, I'm here to tell you that Jody is just on the other side uh, to make your life a little bit better. Is there anybody here that understands uh, just because you uh, 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 experience a, a relationship that is not so pleasurable on one side, uh, you ain't got to kill yourself over here because you ain't seen what God has on the other side just yet. Y'all gonna help me preach in a moment because our babies need to understand that just because they fail at something in life, uh, all you have to do is learn how to get up and dust yourself off. You got to learn how to get up and dust yourself off and go on to the next experience in your life because God will have you in some experiences that will be full of dung. Oh, God, help me. I said God will have you in the experiences in your life that are full of dung, but at the end of the day, You'll learn what it means to grow up, come on, and be grateful for whatever, uh, uh, Shayla, environment uh, you uh, choose to have in your life. Uh, some of those environments are difficult environments, uh, but you learn how to give God praise uh, anyhow. Uh, uh, some of those environments may be broken environments, uh, but you learn how to praise God in your brokenness. Uh, some of those environments may be environments where God will not have provided what you thought he should have provided, but he teaches you how to praise him in the midst of whatever environment, environment you end up in. If some folk would tell the truth, they've been through some, some moments in life that, was, that were not so pleasurable. But if you keep your eyes on God while you're going through, God will give you what you need in order to make it through. Is there anybody here that can testify to somebody else that God has taken me through some channels in life that I had to cry sometime, but thanks be to God that my tears helped me to get through what I was going through at the time, but when I came out, I was able to give God glory simply because I understood God's providence. When God takes certain things out of your life, don't sit there and pout like a little baby or a small brat. Y'all ain't selling here. Don't you dare. Somebody say, don't you dare. Look at another neighbor and say, don't you dare. Miss Sunday school because you're not going into your Sunday school class. I said, tell somebody, don't you dare. Don't you dare miss what God is doing in your life because you're so busy trying to do your own thing because sometimes God will expose you to something that you didn't have the exposure to previously if you just learn how to go through whatever God takes you through. And I'm preaching better than some of you are shouting, but you are true and existential proof that God has taught you how to live. Of, while taking you through some very difficult substances and, and incidents in your life, but here you are still raising your hands. You still got a smile on your face. Now you can testify and tell people, I've been through the storm and the rain. You can wave your hand and say, I made it because I hung in there. Is there anybody here that can say, I made it because I hung in there? The real truth is if I would have quit when I wanted to, uh, I never would have got where I am. Uh, but I kept on praising God with my hands lifted up uh, and tears streaming down my face. Uh, Sometimes I was broke. Uh, Sometimes I was busted. Uh, Sometimes I was disgusted. Uh, but thanks be to God that his grace and his mercy. Grace got on one side and mercy got on the other. And some kind of way he propped me up through every storm that I had to encounter. Is there anybody here that can testify that it was grace that brought me safe thus far? And I'm going to help. I'm going to have grace to take me on further. I said it's easy to lose sight of God. Especially when you're going through. But all oh, this season, I said this season of income tax. This season of financial increase has some of us so off balance. You don't come to church on Sunday till you get back broke. 
You haven't paid any tithes. You got all the new Jordans. You got your new wig. <laughs> got you some new clothes. And it's so easy to lose sight of God, especially when God sends increase. Some of y'all are so crazy. Watch this. Uh, you got a man that don't show up until you get your income tax. Now you all booed up. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach this. I already know. You all booed up with somebody that ain't even paying you no attention when you're broke. I'm trying to show you real love. I'm trying to show you that real love will be with you when you ain't got a dime in your pocket. Real love will stick with you. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. When your hair ain't done. Real love will be with you. When you get a few extra, oh yeah, a few extra robes. When y'all gonna help me preach this? Have you recognized that there are people who lose sight of who you are based on the circumstance? And especially, watch this, especially when God begins to provide increase. We have a tendency of not just being booed up, but many of us become bougie. And some of you get bougie with God. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. Because as soon as God bless you with a financial increase, you find yourself doing everything else but what God has called you to do. Many times we find ourselves in this room. I say in this room, uh, we find ourselves, young people, please avoid this. Uh, we work for what we want. And then we beg for what we need. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me preach this. I said we work for what we want and then beg for what we need. But here's, here's the elements of the text. This text is significant simply because, watch this, this man urges Jesus to tell a story. Somebody say, tell the story. Jesus then uses examples, if you please. He provides this element of parable, this this element, it's hyper hyperbole, it's, a, it's an element, if you will, an illustration. It is not an actual event. He says he uses this uh, to bring about some uh, stable uh, expression to thought, if you will. He says, watch this, he says, there was a rich man. Somebody say a rich man. Rich. Had plenty of money. Y'all gonna help me? He had plenty of money. Are you with me? And one thing you must understand is, is that some point in his life, this man had a clear picture of who God actually was. Are you with me here? However, when God began to increase his wealth, y'all gonna help me? When God began to increase his wealth, he slowly, come on, finds himself in the fluff of life because the fluff of life can push you away from God. Oh, don't look at me in that tone of voice. There are those of you who have allowed the fluff of life to keep you from praying to the Almighty God. Oh, yeah, the fluff of life will keep you from giving to the Almighty God. Oh, yeah, the, the fluff of life will keep you from coming to the house of God. If you doubt my statement, why don't you look around? When you got all that uh, income tax money or when God blessed you with that insurance money, some of y'all, we ain't seen uh, until that man took it all. Some of you have been depressed and in a bad place, watch this, uh, until you saw need to come back to God. And this is where we get the thematic structure, if my people. I know, I know, I know some of you are too holy to be in such a place. I mean, you know, Pastor, uh, uh, you're not talking about me because I've been saved all day long. You lying and the truth ain't in you. You may have been saved, but your actions have not been perfect. Is there anybody here can testify that you had to ask for God's grace and his mercy just this morning? You were on the verge of something, and I know some of y'all ain't going to shout with me, and that's why I'm talking to you. I'm talking right to you with your nasty self because because you don't understand that God is calling for you and your soul to come back to him. Because you've allowed the fluff of life not to even make you realize that you need to beg somebody pardon. Have you ever come in contact with people who can't say I'm sorry? 
I'm talking about they did something to Lanaya. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. And then when they pulled Lanaya's hair, y'all ain't talking. Didn't even say I'm sorry, but because Lanaya is like she is. Come here, Lanaya. Lanaya don't even care about you mistreating. She gonna come and give you a hug anyway. God places a perfect grace in his children because they, they don't even understand when to be mad. Y'all ain't saying it here. And here's what has to happen. Now. You got to allow God to get in your soul uh, and get in your spirit so you can begin to recognize uh, when you're wrong. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, you need to learn to know when you're wrong and stop pointing at everybody else. Uh, stop validating everybody else. Stop trying to tell everybody else's story and talk about your low down ragged itself. Tell somebody where you been. Tell somebody what you thought. Y'all ain't saying it here. There's no transparency in the church. Uh, hey, look at somebody and tell them, say, look here, I don't feel like no Christian this morning. Sometimes you feel like just waving your hand in the air. Waving like you just don't. Y'all so holy, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you have to ask God to refill my cup, Lord. Fill it up, Lord. I know some of y'all are so full, you don't need that. See, you have to ask him to revive my soul again. Is there anybody here that needs revival in your soul? If you do this right now, if you do this, God will send a, he'll send a shock to you and he'll revive your soul. Watch this. If you just tell him, Lord, I need you. Lord, I want you. Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need restoration. Lord, I need your power. Lord, I need your strength. Is there anybody here that can tell God I need you right now? Hey, look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't too bougie to tell God I need him because I don't want to lose the joy of my salvation. I want God to open a door that the devil in hell cannot stop. I want God to open a door that the enemy said I'd never walk through. Look at somebody if you can and tell them, say, I got him in my soul. Look at Jesus. Telling the story. Somebody say, tell the story. Jesus walks up to the man these guys and makes an expression. He says, watch this. He says, this man was rich, plentiful, his seed was increasing, and he thought within himself. See, some of y'all crazy, write that down. <laughs> see, because, see, you wait, wait a minute now. This was some psychological element that you all prevent or invented. You said, y'all said it, and I heard it many times. You know, you can talk to yourself as long as you don't. See, I told y'all made that up. Y'all made that up. Y'all made that up. Y'all made it up. But look at this man. He's crazy. Because not only is he talking to himself, he has an element in his mind. His thoughts are going, come on. His imagination is running. However, guess what? On the other side of the text, he says, Lord, what, is, what am I going to do? All of this increase is coming. Are you with me? Everything is happening so fast. I just won the lottery. See, that's the reason why I tell y'all if you win the lottery, call me first. Yeah, I'm telling you, call, call me first. That way I can help you. to come to some of these decisions so you won't look crazy. You understand? So what happens is he, he is currently, watch this, in his mind, having a conversation within. Is that what your Bible says? He says, what shall I do? Which leads me to the point that he is actually, come on, losing sight of God brings us into this mental battle. Watch this, number one, point number one, which creates doubtful debates. These doubtful debates are mental. It's in your mind. It's in your head. Lord, what am I going to do? How am I going to? What is going to 
so and so and thus and so. He's in a doubtful debate. He says, what shall I do? And his quest to find the solution for his added riches actually shows where his main interests lie. Take a moment. Because he's selfish. Come on. And he's forgotten about, watch this, the service of the Lord. Because at some point you're going to discover that, that he's basically still using this personal pronoun, what am I going to do? Rather than who can I help? Or who can I assist in the process of living life? Does that make sense? With this added riches or these added riches that God has blessed me with, God has provided greater resource. And here I am trying to find a way, come on, uh, to put it up someplace. What you sound like? I mean, you've come in contact with people who are, who are in dire need of assistance. Sometimes God has placed a wealth of wisdom in some of you and y'all don't even open your mouth to say a mumbling word. You see people sinking and going down the wrong road, and instead of you telling them, look here, baby, you are going the wrong way. You're keeping all that knowledge to yourself. Doubtful debates. Here it is. Let's take a moment to analyze this theological side of this. This man's progress has caused them to lose sight of God and the purpose, his purpose, and watch this. He has literally become out of touch with humility. He becomes so engulfed in self that he fails to see need. And this dispute is equivalent to what we've seen down through the years. Uh, the executors of accounts and things of that nature of deceased failed to keep their word. Ah! I know y'all don't want to talk about this part. Because some of you are executors of different accounts of deceased individuals. And you haven't done... It makes you look as if you're wrong. This is when you see a clear picture of uh, when the power gets in the wrong hands. Have you ever come in contact with authority that gets in the wrong hands? You'd be like, Lord, why did you leave what you call in charge? Because one thing is, is that many people are not fair with themselves. They're angry. They're mad. Got a grudge, holding a grudge. They have a chip on their shoulders. And I'm here to tell you that when the power gets in the wrong hands, chaos is inevitable. Crooked is then created. Are you with me here? Confusion is, is constant. Can you say amen? When the power gets in the wrong hands, you've seen it before. Batman! I said Batman! And Robin had to secure it from the Joker. When authority gets in the wrong hands. Superman had to reclaim it from all the bad guys. In fact, if you read your Bible, you'll discover that Samson dealt with a similar issue. He had a problem with Delilah. Ahab, if you will, had that problem because he had to deal with Jezebel. If you need additional information concerning any of these events, please contact our church office at 937-222-0867. And remember, because we care, we share. And have a blessed day.